Welcome. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to enter microbiology data, how to compute it, and finally how to include that in your thesis write-up or in your manuscript. So I have a publication on food microbiology um, laboratory methods, and in the appendix or in the final section of this book or manual, I have a table of how to present results and this a very simplified way of going about your resource entry using Microsoft Excel. So I'll move straight into that part of the book on page 47. This book is available on Amazon and on Seller as well. So presenting your test results in a research publication or thesis. So in microbiology, your data um for a numerical studies um studies where you have to count microorganisms on a plate you're going to have colony counts and of course you are going to dilute the sample so you're going to have some sort of dilution and you would you you would want to um also find the average of the counts you have for the various duplications you have as well as the standard deviation for the various replications that you have. So supposing that this is a sample data we have, we have a column on the Excel for sample ID. And then we also have one for dilution factor. We have the inoculum volume. That's the amount of the sample you took onto the petri dish before the media was poured over in the terms of poor plating or the amount of the volume of sample you picked onto the agar surface to spread for the culturing to be done incubation and then finally the count so that's the inoculum volume and the dilution factor is how many times you diluted your sample and you realize that in many cases, you probably have taken 10 grams of your sample, if it's a solid sample, or 10 ml of your sample into a 90 ml diluent, which could be normal saline, peptone water, or buffet peptone water. In some cases, you could do more than that. You can do 25 grams or 25 ml in 225. So normally, it is one part in a total volume of 10. So one is to nine, nine volume parts. So that gives your first dilution, and then from there you pick one mil into a nine mil diluent, making your second dilution, third dilution, and subsequently to the number of dilutions that you have, depending on the test you are doing, and then how contaminated or how the microbial distribution in your sample may be. So the dilution factor, the inoculum volume. And the colonies, the colonies is the number of uh, colonies growing on the plate after incubation. So the number of cell mass that comes together as a colony for growth, that is the colonies or colony count. The next thing is the number of confirmed colonies. So in some cases, in some of the tests, you may go on to do confirmatory tests and so the number of confirmed colonies in percentage can also be added to your Excel sheets. And finally, you can input a formula, which I've explained here, and I'm going to practically demonstrate in the video for you to be able to calculate your counts. In colony forming units per gram of your sample if it's solid, or per mil of your sample if its volume is liquid. Then you express these counts in log CFU. But notice something here in Excel, your value is going to be given in this format something E plus something. So what this means is 2.00 times or multiplied by 10 raised to the power 2. That is what this means. So in word, in word, what that simply means is two 
times 10 raised to the power 2. But in Excel, Excel will not give that to you. It's going to be written in Excel as 2.00e plus 02. This is how it will be in Excel, but it means the same thing as this. All right. So you would find the log CFU of this. That is just converting this to the logarithm base 10 units. So just to express it in the numerical form. In terms of analyzing data for microbial analysis, we always use the logarithm units, the log CFU units, and not the CFU per gram. So, irrespective of the number of data you have, you express all of them as log CFU, and it makes it easier to understand the data. So, for example, we have 2.0 times 10 to the power 2 here, and then 1.6 times 10 to the power 2. This becomes very difficult analyzing using um your various statistical tool packages or the the statistical software is available it becomes difficult analyzing using this so the logarithm units as a standard unit for um microbial data analysis so you express them as logarithm units which will give them whole numbers or some sort of decimal to decimal place and you'll be able to easily analyze the data so this is just the same as 2.3 and that means 2.2 log CFU units. All right, so if you want to find your average, you can find your average as the CFU per gram unit or as a log CFU unit. Whatever you need to use, make sure that you have um, included that in whatever discussion you are writing. So if you are writing as 1.80 times 10 to the power 2, the unit should show a CFU per gram and not log CFU. But you'll find in many manuscripts, in, pre in many present, um, papers, that results have been presented in log CFU units because it's easier to compare data that way. It's easier to analyze your data that way. So whatever you have, if the other papers you are comparing to are in CFU per gram or per mil units, can easily convert that to the log CFU and it makes your data analysis and discussion easier to make. So this is basically how the results are presented. We are going to take this into Excel and then work on it. So in Excel, we are going to have here, um, supposing this is your lab notebook, you would have a number and you have the dates so that whatever experiments you do, um, you date them, the date of the analysis, and you may want to add the date of the results in your lab notebook. Then the subsequent things that are in here will follow. So I'm going to do that quickly and then we'll enter. All right, so um, we have a test here. That's APC, aerobic plate counts, the date of analysis. Supposing the date of our analysis was 26th of February, 2024. And then um, we are using the APHA method. That's 37 degrees for 48 hours. So by 28th of February, we have our results. Uh, sample code is MPO, the dilution factor. That's the dilution factor that gives us counts for the work we are doing. So, uh, for example, you may have had several dilutions. Your first dilution may have given you more than uh, 300 plates, 300 colonies. That's too numerous to count. And your subsequent dilution, um, that's um, dilution number uh, to giving you some counts, whatever dilution factor that gave you counts, you just have to input it. In some cases, your first dilution may give you very low counts, less than the 30 counts. So whatever that counts are, you just record it as such. So um, 
1 e1 is the same as writing 10 raised to the power 1. This is the same as 10 raised to the power 1, which is the same as 10 actually in scientific numeric in the scientific um numeral is going to be 1.00 e plus 01 that's a scientific notation so um that will be the same for the second replicate if we had two replications so the inoculum volume supposing we had 0 0.5 as our inoculum volume that is 500 microliters was pipetted onto the plates or on the dish. The number of colonies is 10 according to the data we are using. And for aerobic plate counts, whatever grows on the plate is a bacterial colony. It's a count. We want to classify it as 100% confirmed colony. So that's 100% at the percentage because of the formula we will be using. In the case of some other tests like Staph aureus, like Escherichia coli, E. coli, like um, yeast and molds and others, if you went on to do any confirmatory test and you have some percentage of your colonies showing positive and others negative, you can express that as percentage and include that here. So now the count in your CFU per gram is going to be this formula equal to your dilution factor multiplied by the number of colonies you have which can equally be multiplied everything oh sorry everything here multiplied by the percentage number of confirmed colonies. And everything here divided by our inoculum volume. So it's still the same formula we have in our notebooks, in our test books, uh, in the standard methods. So the dilution factor times the number of colonies divided by the volume of inoculum. In some books, you may see dilution. The difference is with dilution, dilution is by how much you have diluted. So one in 10 is going to be 10 raised to the power negative one. That is the dilution. But the factor is the factor by which you have diluted it. And that's 10 times. So that's 10 raised to the power positive one, positive one. All right, so um, that will give us our answer here, which is 2.00 exponent 2. And with my Excel, I can easily drag this down and have the same for the others. So it's irrespective of the data I have, I just have to get the formula for the first one right. I can drag it through. So I'll express this as logarithm units as equal to log of discounts that's i2 and that is giving me the logarithm unit i'll just drag this down and i have it there so i want to express this as two decimal place so that is that and my average equal to average i can find average of this or that but i advise you to use the log units and I have the average. Let me go on to find the standard deviation. The standard deviation is always the standard deviation of the logarithm units. So plus or minus 0 0.7, 0 0.7. So this is how our data is going to look like. Now in your thesis or your dissertation write-up what are the data you have to include you have to put everything here in your write-up i don't think that's needed what is needed in your write-up is going to be this so supposing this is your write-up you can 
just give a title to your table 1.0 table of microbial load uh, whatever title you give your table you can insert a table one column will be your sample id and the other will just be your results so we have sample id and then the results that's all that is needed in your thesis write-up so now the average you have is 2.25 and we we'll insert a plus or minus symbol the standard deviation 0 0.07 and this is in the unit of log cfu so that that helps us all this is how you can present your data microbial analysis data so this is for aerobic plate count um, if you want your data to be such that you have all the tests together uh, you can decide to also insert a column to the right where you input the test so this will be um, aerobic plate count And you can have your total coliforms here and the rest to follow suit so simply this is how our data is going to be in the thesis write-up then in your discussion you are going to discuss this results you are having in comparison to other works that people have done supposing this is a yogurt sample mp yogurt you compare mp yogurt to other data the total counts for other yogurt samples on the markets or other you got samples in literature what people have done then also you can compare this to what the standards are for your locality so if you are in ghana you can compare it to what ghana standards authority standards give for you got if you are in europe you can compare it to what the european um, society gives if you are in america you can compare it to what the american public health association gives for some of these tests and you can as well still be in ghana and compare your data to other standards in other parts of the world and then can make a good discussion for the sample you have if it was more than one sample you analyze within the samples you can also compare the results you have supposing we have mp yogurt we have ap yogurt you can compare mp to ap and so on and so forth so if you want to use a statistical tool to do that, you can just go to whatever tool you are using. If it's past two SPSS, stats graphic, you would input the logarithm CFU units. That's the counts in log, log CFU for each of the samples. So you can input MPO and then the log CFU units for all of that in that particular software and then you do your analysis just like you are doing for any other um, statistical analysis so that's simply how to go about inputting your microbial data and then calculating for your log cfu in another video i'm going to demonstrate how you can do your statistical analysis using spss and then also some other statistical packages so stay tuned to this channel and I'm sure you'll find some great content here.